A New York appellate court denied Donald Trump's emergency request to stay the enforcement of the nearly half a billion dollar civil judgment against him in the New York Attorney General fraud case. Donald Trump appears to have serious financial issues right now, and he seems more desperate than ever. Speaking about being more desperate than ever, Donald Trump is now also begging, as Donald Trump would say, begging like a dog, a New York federal judge, Judge Lewis Kaplan, who Donald Trump was continuously attacking during the E. Jean Carroll trial. Trump is begging him to stay the enforcement of the $83.3 million judgment there. Um, that was awarded to E. Jean Carroll. E. Jean Carroll, through her lawyer, Roberta Kaplan, responded earlier in the day saying how untrustworthy and desperate Donald Trump is and how his conduct reveals that he likely does not even have the assets to satisfy the $83.3 million judgment. Both President Biden and Donald Trump went to the border in Texas today, whereas President Biden called for a bipartisan border deal to be passed that was led by a Republican from Oklahoma that had the Republican wish list that Donald Trump directed MAGAs in Congress to kill, which they did. Donald Trump went to the border speaking bunch of kind of just nonsense and talking about his policy that he referred to as Title II. Yes, Donald Trump doesn't know his own policies. But then again, I'm not sure Donald Trump knows where he even is in general right now. And I'm being serious. This cognitive decline is happening at a rapidly accelerating pace. And I don't know if you saw what just went down, though. We, we did a video of it earlier in the day that's already got over a million views. Donald Trump made a video of himself. He, he recorded himself. And in this video, it, it was some of the most unhinged, deranged, cognitively impaired things I, I've ever it's very strange. I want to go over that. And I also just received a lot of comments from people just pointing out the way Donald Trump's posture is, how he's been dragging his right leg, the way his eyes are pointing in different directions. I want to break that down as well. Also, the Republican attempt to impeach Hunter Biden is continuing to <laughs> fail. Yes, I meant <laughs> Hunter Biden, not really sure they understand that Hunter Biden did not hold any position in the United States government. But to Hunter Biden's credit, he showed up at the deposition and testified. As far as I know, he didn't invoke his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination the way Donald Trump had done in other cases. And this was in a matter where because of actual weaponization by the mega Republicans, Hunter Biden's been charged in two separate federal cases, one for allegedly being under the influence of, of drugs when he purchased a firearm and another one involving taxes, which he repaid. And if that was a standard, then I think every MAGA would be kind of charged with the <laughs> same crime. Um, but I'll break that down, you know, and it seems that these MAGA Republicans once again made utter fools of them. Themselves. Lauren Boebert, everybody, looks like she's playing family incarceration. Bingo! And I think they just called out our son. Bingo! Because he just got arrested for a string of car thefts. He was one of those people in the photos holding the weapon of war next to the Christmas tree. And this follows Lauren Boebert's history of being arrested multiple times, her husband's history, her former husband, of exposing himself in public to minors. The Boberts for you. That's MAGA for you. 2024. Also, the United States Supreme Court set oral argument on Trump's absolute presidential immunity claim for April 22nd. Yep, folks, the Supreme Court thought that they should just wait weeks before addressing Donald Trump's application for a stay and when they finally address it to set oral argument for April 22nd, which effectively um, delays this case for months and months and months and uh, probably makes it unlikely that there will be uh, the federal criminal case in Washington, D.C. in 2024. But 
the Manhattan District Attorney case set for March 25th of 2024. That's going. So by the end of May, ladies and gentlemen, and Midas Mighty members out there, Donald Trump could potentially be hit with half a billion dollars in judgments against him, as well as be a felon in the state of New York. Wow. Country. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch Show. How are you doing? Hello, Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Show. He just changes the name on us, uh, up on us at any time. It's okay. It's a- the Midas Touch Podcast, Midas Touch Show, whatever, whatever Ben wants it to. That's it's it's all good. You know, I I think another name for today's show could be psychological whiplash because as we go through all of these days, it's like good news, good news, good news, horrible news. Oh, good news, good news, good news, bad news. And I just constantly feel like I am. I, I don't even know what the word would be, but it's uh, it, it's an interesting feeling, kind of following every development and you know getting really excited about certain things and then getting really let down by other things. But we're going to go through it all: the good and the bad, and the ugly and the very good. So you know, don't you worry. We will be breaking it all down here for you, Jordy. What's hey, new, man? I'm excited. Yeah, I think that expression is what like two steps forward, one step back sort of thing. That's definitely the vibe that I've been getting some from time to time. But hey. I'm stoked for the show. A lot to talk about. I think we just dive right into it. I think so as well. I didn't mention in the intro, which I should have, though, was earlier in the day, special counsel Jack Smith had filed uh, some paperwork with Judge Eileen Cannon requesting that the Mar-a-Lago document case now take place on July 8th before Judge Eileen Cannon. Now, wouldn't that be something if that case goes to trial? Donald Trump... This thing goes to trial before the other ones, right? Like the Eileen Cannon case. I, I, when we look back on all this, I think it's going to be interesting. And sorry to cut you off, but just thinking about kind of people's initial perceptions and what's going on. But I'm, I'm, I'm not making any excuses for Judge Eileen Cannon. She's horrific. Um, but and then seeing how these things actually pan out, and it's unlikely that this date that Jack Smith's going to pan. Trump's probably going to say, "Yeah, no, we have to do all these things. It's going to have to be actually in 2045, right?" That's going to be Trump's response. It's it's going to be a whole thing. But but I'm thinking back, Ben, to the Manhattan DA and, you know, Alvin Bragg. And the one thing that really uh, sticks in my brain as a core memory is when KFA, our, our esteemed legal AF co-host, who used to work in the Manhattan DA's office, had on the show, had on our network, on our YouTube channel, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg before that. This is before the charges were filed, right? And way before they were way filed. far before. And the comments that were happening in the chat while KFA was interviewing Alvin Bragg were Alvin Bragg needs to be arrested. How dare he? Alvin Bragg needs to be taken off the case. Is he on the take? Who's paying him off? Like the most, some of the most horrific comments that I've ever seen directed at this man. And he ended up being the first to indict and he's going to be the first to go to trial and possibly one the the only or one of the only trials to happen before the election now that Manhattan DA's case is like the most pivotal case that we have before us it's it's just it, it's wild when you look back on it look and i think these civil cases also which may have seemed like footnotes with 91 criminal indictments across the country though we've been talking about how significant and important that is. I mean, Donald Trump's whole life and identity is built around the fraud that he is this massive billionaire. And you have Trump's lawyer like Alina Haba and these other people like that saying, he's got the money. Of course, he's going to Mm -hmm. post this bond. He's got the cash. He's liquid. And then Donald Trump filing documents with the appellate division in New York saying that he doesn't have the cash. He says in these filings um, where he requested that they stay the enforcement of the judgment or in the alternative, he tried to like negotiate with them and said, look, 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 I understand (laughs) we're talking about, look, I understand (laughs) that the judgment, according hands, is 460, I'm not going to do the Bernie voice, but it's 464 uh, million dollars. But what if I posted a- Hear me out, hear me out. Hear me out. I'm going to do a supersedious <laughs> bond at $100 million. How about that? 
And the appellate division's like, yeah, that's not how it works. The appellate division gave him a little break in the sense that they'll allow him to potentially take out loans from banks that are chartered with New York or are licensed in New York. But that really wasn't, I think, a kind of major hurdle. I think he could have found it's a like, bank. It's out. like, Donald, listen, we're not, we're not the flea market. Okay. You can't haggle with us. All right. Like <laughs> the, the, ju the judgment is the judgment, either pay up or shut up. You know, and then his arguments in the E. Jean Carroll case as well. Um, he tried to argue to judge Lewis Kaplan that E. Jean Carroll was cool with him not paying. Like he actually argued. He's like, he's like, yeah, she, she's all right with this. And E. Jean Carroll responded like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, that's not what I, th th this is what E. Jean Carroll put in her brief that was filed earlier today. She goes, attempting to sidestep his burden, Trump claims that E. Jean Carroll has conceded he is good for the money and is now somehow precluded from suggesting otherwise. That argument is as baseless as it is misleading. <laughs> and what Donald Trump is, uh, to make that argument, you know how during the punitive damages phase of the E. Jean Carroll defamation case, where she was ultimately awarded $83.3 million, she showed those clips where Trump's like a maniac in the New York Attorney General civil fraud case, where he's saying that Mar-a-Lago is worth $1.8 billion and Trump bragging in his depositions how rich he is. So Trump is saying, because E. Jean Carroll showed the video clip of me saying how rich I am to support the punitive damages, E. Jean Carroll is conceding that therefore I am rich and that because I'm so wealthy and have all of this money in my bank account, I shouldn't have to post a bond. And this was a great line from E. Jean. <laughs> That's actually his argument. It's, it's the I'm good for an excuse. It's the I'm Well, here's what E. Jean Carroll said. He goes, he goes, he goes, <laughs> I love that I crack up at these legal briefs. E. Jean Carroll's <laughs> lawyer goes, he, referring to Trump, doesn't even acknowledge the risks that now accompany his financial situation from a half a billion dollar judgment obtained by the New York Attorney General to the 91 felony charges that might end his career as a businessman per permanently. He simply asks the court to, quote, trust me and offers in a case with an $83.3 million judgment against him, the court filing equivalent of a paper napkin signed by the least <laughs> trustworthy of borrowers. It's so good right there. And um, I expect Judge Lewis Kaplan, who Donald Trump has attacked, and now Donald Trump goes to Judge Lewis Kaplan saying, please, Judge, you have this equitable authority to show me some leniency. I'm a good guy, right? I'm a good guy, Judge. Help me out, Judge. <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing the impression. You know, when people hate when I keep on playing this. People keep hating the one. I get so many emails where people are saying, hey, Ben, stop doing – I show the clip where Trump and all of his speeches, he's like, mommy, <laughs> mommy, I need help, mommy, mommy. And people, I, I've actually – someone called my phone. No, I don't know, no. Do not do that. And someone, and someone <laughs> don't, texted. Don't do that. Yeah, do not do that and, and, and said, can you please stop playing that video? But, but my impression of him is saying, Judge <laughs> – Judge Kaplan, please, please, Judge Kaplan, can 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 you spare a penny for me, Judge Kaplan? And, I mean, and he's lifting he's lifting the weights while you do it in your impression. Yeah, yeah, he's lifting <laughs> or, or, or holding his hand. I'm not really sure, but but anyway, that's what Donald Trump's doing there. And Judge Lewis Kaplan, he, you know, I, I find this kind of funny. So Judge Lewis Kaplan knows that the date when the judgment gets enforced by E. Jean Carroll, I think it's no later than March seventh, right? So. So the way Judge Kaplan responds is he sets a briefing schedule that goes right up until March 7th, <laughs> where I suspect that he'll probably reject it just, you know, a day or two before. And then Donald Trump's then going to have to wait now because Trump's waited like almost until the judgment was going to be enforced before even bringing this in the first place. So that allowed the judge to say, well, okay, I guess it's not that big of an urgency. So right. I'm going to set the schedule here. So what the judge is doing, and I know I can tell he's doing it on purpose is to give, to give Trump like a 48 hour period where he's going to have to scramble and Trump's going to potentially try to hold out the hope that like he'll be like he'll be like maybe the second circuit will grant it but if the second circuit doesn't then boom E. Jean Carroll's lawyers Roberta Kaplan they're like ready to go and just a way to even think about this too 
these buildings of Donald Trump, let's say you do a forced sale of Donald Trump's businesses, right? They have, they have like people in a secured position. Like he has mortgages on this building and then he has to pay, you know, the, the, the various taxes, right? So say you have a building for like $400 million, right? By the time you have to pay the mortgage off, of the remaining debt that's on the building and then pay your taxes. Even if you sold one building, you may only be able to extract, you know, maybe 40 million bucks from it. So then you go to the next building and then you keep on going until you take all of the assets or you literally go into the bank account and snatch the money. And then it's, and then it's yours. So then even if Donald Trump were to kind of later prevail on an appeal, which he's not going to, sorry, so sad you didn't post a bond. It's basically, it's basically mooted. And that just goes to show you though, like clearly if Trump had the money, you post it the day. You don't wait for prejudgment interest to accrue hundreds of thousands of dollars. You post it that day. It's not even a question. He does not have the money. And yeah, can I just say, I can't... love I love how animated you get when you talk about this one specifically. Just like the processes and the legal. like It's what makes you a great professor. It's why your class, I hear, is just like signed up and, and, and like one of the most hot classes at, at USC. Hot class at USC. Hot Everyone's class. trying to get in. Everyone's and, trying to get and, in. And, it, and it's honestly, it's honestly that because we, we did a full zoom in on Ben for the audio listeners. But like I was smiling ear to ear as Ben was breaking that down from someone who doesn't know the law and the intricacies of like the behind the scenes stuff. So kudos to you, big bro. The, the funny thing is though, like, like even like weeks ago and, and like we've all known this, right? This is something that Donald Trump has been trying to hide his entire life, that he does not have the wealth that he pretends to have. And the second Ben started reading through these documents, like when they were filed weeks and weeks and weeks ago, Ben goes, you see that? You, you know what that means? And we're like, what does that mean? He doesn't have the cash. Like <laughs> you could tell he does not have the money. And then we saw Alina Habba go out there and continuously do her, I would say debase and humiliate herself, but just, you know, that's just be <laughs> Alina Habba, which means the same exact thing. And so, you know, I, I put together this clip yesterday. We, we, we put together this clip yesterday of Alina Habba from February 20th, you know, just a little over a week ago and uh the news that broke yesterday as as broken by michael popak of our very legal af podcast that's here on the midas touch network just watch this clip and and uh, i'm just gonna say i don't i think she has a tell okay judge engeron says that he wants this 350 million dollars within 30 days now i know that you're planning on appealing this but you've still got to put up the full amount pending that appeal does Donald Trump so. have that kind yeah. of money sitting around? Yes. I mean, he does. Of course, he has money. You know, he's a billionaire. Um, we know that. Um, and Michael Popak, Legal AF. It's official. Donald Trump's lawyers have told the court system that Donald Trump does not have enough money to put up the required cash bond to stop the enforcement of the New York Attorney General's over $500 million judgment. <laughs> Life, life comes at you fast, brothers. Life comes <laughs> at you fast. Idea. Idea. And for, for more, you know, if you want like a deep dive into all the legal issues, everybody, I'm sure you all already do, but make sure that you add the legal AF by Midas Touch podcast anywhere you find podcasts. You know, when I watched her on that interview and she gave an interview with several other kind of right wing media, her tells like they'd be the worst poker player. I mean, you can see her, Brett, and you zoom in, or we zoomed in on her with the video, but you, you, <laughs> you zoomed in, and you can literally see every, like, lie, and, and she's not a good liar, and, and you know, again, she did the same thing with he's going to testify, and he doesn't testify. Anytime she goes out and does that, I'm like, okay, got it. It's, it's literally, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, it's literally the opposite of that. I want to, though, do a, I usually sometimes wait till the end of the pod to do that, but I think we do it now, which is yeah. the compare and contrast of Biden v. Donald Trump, because I think it's so important. And I think as we talk about the results in Michigan now and the results in, you know, Iowa and South Carolina for, for the Democrats and the results in New Hampshire, they are telling a story. And while the media, wants to, you know, really kind of push this 
this this this vitriolic anti-Biden narrative, you know, and like they scream at him and they yell at him and they like they, they want to trigger him to say so. it's very strange. The American people are smart. I want to say that. I mean, not all not the MAGAs. But by and large, the mainstream exceptions may have exceptions may apply. Yeah. You know, like mainstream Republicans, like actual conservatives, yes, independents, people not yes. affiliated with political parties, progressives, liberals, the true silent majority, people who don't want to go to weirdo rallies, you know, and we just want to like have normal days and normal lives and we don't want you know donald trump going oh, everybody do you know about it like like we just we just don't want that you know setting aside of course <laughs> not setting aside we always have to acknowledge the fact that like he talks about destroying nato he praises vladimir putin and president g he goes on and says the most horrific things about our country and and so there's all of that but also like i just think a lot of people are looking at it and are just like revolted by this like orange deteriorating blob who goes up there and just acts like a maniac and it's like it's like it's just gross and it's weird and it's just like oh like just get, like it's it's an embarrassment it's an embarrassment to our you know to our country that it exists our allies abroad are watching this and seeing what's you know what's going on and but i think they understand by and large we, we you know the distinction here so you can really see this distinction in the fact that both President Biden and Donald Trump went to the border today. And President Biden went to the border, went to Brownsville, Texas. Donald Trump went to Eagle Pass. Um, and President Biden went with solutions. And Donald Trump went with kind of his incoherent, like he doesn't even know what his own purported policy was because, he, again, he doesn't really even know where he, he doesn't know these things. He doesn't know the details. He doesn't know what his job is. You know, and so let, let's just do a comparison here if we can. Why don't we start off with some of the Trump clips? Um, and this is how Donald Trump is talking about it, about people who don't speak languages. We have languages. Like, just watch this. Here, play this clip. Because everybody I speak to says how horrible it is. Nobody explained to me how allowing millions of people from places unknown, from countries unknown, who don't speak languages. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. They're they're truly foreign languages. Nobody speaks them. Yeah. So I, I, again, Brett, you once read the transcript of what he was saying. You know about you know when he when he was trying to explain how he interposes, as he likes to call it, the names and why he calls Nancy Pelosi, Nikki Haley, and why he calls Biden Obama. And when you were reading that, he's like, so I call her Tricky Nikki, Nikki Tricky, Tricky Nikki. And I when say, you, Obama, Tricky Nikki. Obama. When you read the transcripts, it, it adds an extra layer of power to it, honestly, because it shows you just how much of a mental case like he he truly sounds like. When you see it, it sounds, it sounds crazy enough, when you see it written, you're like, that's a whole lot. Of, that's just, this is a, a complete mess. My new thing is anytime Donald Trump has this, these cognitive moments and says things like he said in that clip, like the people don't have languages and we'll show you some of his other m moments from today. I mean, he has these cognitive moments every single day now. I'm, my thing is I always repost them and I go, oh, Trump interposed again. There he goes, interposing. That's my uh, code word for Donald Trump having cognitive moments. I think everyone should do that. Oh, more interposing happening. <laughs> I, I want to show what's going on uh, at the border with Donald Trump interposing and President Biden saying, look, folks, can we get a deal done here? Can we get a bipartisan border deal? I gave you Republicans pretty much everything you've always said you wanted. I'm taking this very seriously, but Donald Trump wants chaos here and wants to kill it. I want to show that comparison, but I also want to show, you know, it was an interesting thing that when you actually speak to the residents at Eagle Pass, for example, and I'm going to show one of those clips, the people actually at the border seem to not seem, they, they get it. They, they know the difference between reality and propaganda because mm -hmm. they live it. So let's talk more about what's happening with uh, Trump's speech and Biden's speech. Let's take a look at what some of the residents are saying at the border. And let's talk about a lot more when we come back from our first quick break. Sleep is the foundation of our mental and physical health. When you're sleeping well, you can perform at your best mentally and physically. 
Proper sleep can also increase focus, boost energy, and improve your mood. Introducing Beam's Dream Powder, a science-backed healthy hot cocoa for sleep. If you know me, you know that Dream has been an absolute game changer for my sleep. Sometimes I find myself up at night in bed with my thoughts and uneasiness. Well, that's not the case anymore because I started to drink Beam's Dream Powder. Prior to Beam's Dream Powder, the poor sleep and late nights staying up really affected my mood and energy, but not anymore. And today, our listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder, their science-backed healthy hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Now available in delicious flavors like chocolate peanut butter, cinnamon cocoa, and sea salt caramel with only 15 calories and zero grams of sugar. Better sleep has never tasted better. Other sleep aids can cause next day grockiness, but Dream contains a powerful all-natural blend of reishi, magnesium, L-theanine, melatonin, and nano CBD to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. The numbers don't lie. In a clinical study, 93% of participants reported Dream helped them get better sleep. Beam Dream is easy to add to your nighttime routine. Just mix Dream into hot water or milk, froth, and enjoy before bed. Find out why Forbes and New York Times are all talking about Beam and why it's trusted by the world's top athletes and business professionals. If you want to try Beam's best-selling Dream Powder, get up to 40% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash Midas and use code Midas at checkout. That's shop. B-E-A-M dot com slash Midas and use code Midas for up to 40% off. What if you could support family farmers and reduce your environmental imprint all while enjoying the highest quality meat on earth? When you join the Moink movement, you can. Moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork and chicken and sustainable wild-caught Alaskan salmon straight to your door. Moink farmers farm like our grandparents did. And as a result, Moink meat tastes like it should because the family farm, let's face it, does it better. And the Moink difference is a difference you can taste. Unlike the supermarket, Moink gives you total control over the quality and source of your food. You choose the meat delivered in every box, like ribeyes to chicken breast to pork chops to salmon fillets and much more. Plus you can cancel at any time. Moink is helping save rural America. I love it. And you will too. Join the Moink movement today. Shark Tank host Kevin O'Leary called Moink's bacon the best bacon he's ever tasted. And Ring Doorbell founder Jamie Siminoff jumped at the chance to invest in Moink. Plus they guarantee you'll say, oink, oink, I'm just happy I got Moink. I know I do and you will too. Keep American farming going by signing up at Moink Box dot com slash Midas Touch right now and listeners of this show get free bacon for a year. That's one year of the best bacon you'll ever taste, but for a limited time. It's spelled M-O-I-N-K box.com slash Midas Touch. That's moinkbox.com slash Midas Touch. Let's Jordy, go. Great I love these pro democracy sponsors. I, it's sizzling. I love the I love the mnemonics that they use for Moink. I love I love the products. Beam is wonderful, by the way. I I I, I drink Beam all the time right before bed. It just like gives me the best sleep, especially now that I have a baby. So, look, check it out. Links descriptions. Links are in the descriptions. Let me say full sentences here. Click them. Use our codes. Let them know we sent you. Helps the show, and they're wonderful products. Like truly delicious. Beam truly delicious. Moink truly delicious. Jordy, I think you were helping with a transition there by not putting together full sentences. And you were going to say that that's just like Donald Trump at Eagle Pass, who's unable to articulate things anymore in sentences. And 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 and, and, and that's the thing, though, too. And, and I, I, I talk about this a lot. I go, y'all realize that Donald Trump's not speaking in sentences. And people are like, what do you mean? I'm like, at a at a minimal threshold abandoned in structure people are like what do you mean i'm like so goes up and he gives these he gives these speeches which are more like traveling fascist circus events and he kind of just says words and and jumbles them together and then talks about how he's not cognitively impaired but there's not really cohesive sentences and so you know there was that clip we were talking about with you know where he was saying that how he interposes Nikki Haley instead of Nancy Pelosi. 
And Brett, you read that transcript and it's like, Nikki, tricky, tricky, Nikki, Obama, Obama. And I say, Obama, Hussein. And I say, Obama, Hussein, like Rush Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh. You remember him? Hussein. And I don't know what he meant. And here's what I think he meant. And okay, that's not normal. Okay. That's not normal behavior. And then of course, there's a lot of dangerous stuff that he's saying as well about abandoning NATO and uh, uh, President G and President Putin. These, these guys, they're like from Hollywood. Like, like if, like if you saw a Hollywood actor, you'd be like, no, no, you're not as good. You're not as good as them, as them, Tricky Nicky. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'm like, this is a, this is like a sick person. Like, what, what the, what in the, what in the world is this? This isn't like a, again. That's why, like, this isn't like a okay Democrat thing, Republicans. No, 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 no. This is like some MAGA oddity. This is MAGA weird. So let's go. We'll do the comparisons at the border right here. This is another kind of uh, moment by Donald Trump where he doesn't know what his own policy was. Title Forty Two. And so he calls it title two. Like this was kind of an easy one to, to know. That's like the main message that he was supposed he was inter- to. He was interposing. He was interposing. Play it. And they're bringing with them tremendous problems, including medical problems. As you know, we had title two and we had different things to solve that problem. But we had title two and different things to solve the problem of two and title you know, what about, what about, what about Newscom? Have you, have you heard about the, have you heard about Governor Newscom? <laughs> like, you know, look, first off, play that. So you see, that's what he says next. And then I'll talk about it. And we weren't promising free education, free medical, free everything. I mean, every, all the promises that are made, no wonder they come. I mean, uh, you look at what this Governor Newscom from California, isn't that his name, Newscom? Uh, What he's done to California is unbelievable. People. Yeah, it's untethered from any co. You're just calling somebody new scum. I mean, like, let's face it. Like, if you're going to be doing a speech like that and you want to use the law enforcement officers as kind of props behind you the way Donald Trump does, and you Mm -hmm. go up there and you're doing you know, the, the new scum routine and you're talking about people speaking this language and that language and it's like, it, it is really just demeaning and, and degrading to our country in general. But let's compare that because they're both at the border. Here's President Biden right here calling on Donald Trump uh, to work with him and saying, let's actually do something productive. Play this clip. I understand my predecessor's legal pass today. So here's what I would say to Mr. Trump. Instead of playing politics with this issue, instead of telling members of Congress to block this legislation, join me. Or I'll join you in telling the Congress to pass this bipartisan border security bill. We can do it together. You know and I know it's the toughest, most efficient, most effective border security bill this country has ever seen. So instead of playing politics with the issue, why don't we just get together and get it done? Let's remember who the heck we work for. We work for the American people, not the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. We work for the American people. Yeah, I think that's such... It's, it's such a smart uh, speech to give down there, because I think at all points, what we've seen on, a, on an issue like the border, right, which is frequently blamed on Democrats, that's typically kind of the MO, right? That's where the media directs their attention. That's where a lot of Americans direct their attention. And you could show that you are actually the serious party that's serious about getting things done. You know, I think that's important when you are willing to put country over party. And we've seen the results of things like that, like in New York three, our, our hometown district with, with Tom Swazi. And when they interviewed the voters after, you know, people who were concerned about the border took a look at the candidates and they saw one candidate whining about the border. Uh, the, the woman who was trying to replace George Santos and the Republicans, they saw her complaining about the border a whole lot. And then they saw Tom Swazi, who was just uh, uh, sworn in yesterday. Uh, they saw Tom Swazi going, all right, let's let's do something about it, okay? There's this bipartisan border deal that's appro- that is endorsed by the Border Patrol Union. 
I would vote for that. Would you vote for that? That's what we should be doing. We should be coming together and finding common sense solutions. And when they interviewed the voters after that, that was one of the big things that ended up swaying them to go at, you know what? Like this person actually wants to do something. This other person just wants to whine about it. I think Americans are going to have the same sort of, you know, contrast when they look at Trump and when they look at Biden here. And that's just who President Biden is too, right? Because like, Brett, you say it's a smart speech to give down there. And I agree, it is a smart speech. But at the the heart of it too, that's just who he is, right? He genuinely wants to reach across the aisle, find common sense solutions to very difficult problems. And so when you look at the compare and contrast that we're doing here, I mean, like you're literally looking at someone just, you know, who is an adult in the room in President Biden and somebody sticking crayons up his nose like Donald Trump. Uh, These clips are outrageous when you look at them next to each other. Absolutely. And let me, let's show this other clip of President Biden. And then, Brett, I want you to load after that one, after Tom Swazi from New York's third congressional district, who just won a few weeks ago. Um, I want to show you his speech as well, because that to me is my brand of politics. Like if you're looking at like, how would you describe it? And, and that's why to me, it isn't even like it isn't even like to say, oh, I'm 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 on this team or that team. Like for me, I view this as number one, who are the problem solvers? Number two, who's supporting demo well, not in this order, but also who's supporting democracy. That's probably my number one. Who are the problem solvers here? What are the plans? What are they doing? Are are they treating the American people? Um, with respect and are treating American people intelligently? Are they trying to exploit us? That That's what I'm trying to search for the data of. And when I watch President Biden here, and then you see Swazi, and then I'm going to show you the video that Donald Trump made of himself. It's such a contrast. So here, play this video of President Biden, and then we'll do Swazi. And folks here in Brownsville and all along the border know that. We need to have their backs, your backs. And I want the people to understand clearly what happened here. This bill was in the United States Senate, was on its way to being passed. Then it was derailed by rank and file politics, rank partisan politics. The U.S. Senate needs to reconsider this bill. And those senators who oppose it need to set politics aside and pass it on the merits, not on whether it's going to benefit one party or benefit the other party. It's about whether it benefits the American people. It's what the American people deserve. Powerful, powerful stuff right there. And then I want to take a look at Tom Swazi, Democrat from New York's third. And when I was watching him give this House floor speech, I was like, exact, that's who I want in Congress, a problem solver. Play this clip. Thomas R. Swazi was elected for representative to Congress for the third congressional district of New York. I've so- talked with Democrats, Republicans, and independents, and they all ask the same thing. What about me? What are you doing for me? Enough with the theater and the drama. Enough with the hyperbole and the histrionics. Enough with the shutdowns and the putdowns. The people aren't paying us to make things worse. The people pay us to be in the solutions business. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, on the night of my election victory, I promised the people of Long Island and Queens I would deliver a simple message to this chamber. Wake up. The people are sick and tired of the finger pointing and the petty partisan bickering. They want us to work together. Yeah, I mean, very, very simple, powerful. That's to me what politics should be. Democrats, Republicans, independents. On the other hand, like you you have that on the one hand. And that to me is like where the Democratic Party, you know, is today. I know, you know, they, you know, MAGA Republicans want to have like, you know, they're libs of TikTok or whatever and find random people who aren't representative of the leadership of what the Democratic Party is. But, you know, when I look at we have the mugshots of, of, of Lauren Boebert and her family right here, because like th- these are the leaders of the MAGA Republican Party. I mean, there's Lauren Boebert. And why, while they try to attack and criticize our families, it's like worry about your own families. And by the way, I would never even show this photo if you weren't attacking our families here in the United States of America, mm-hmm. people like Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and Donald Trump. And, and 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 here's here's what MAGA is doing. Again, this is not normal. Let's show this clip. So, so just to set up this clip, you've got Donald Trump makes a video of himself. He makes the recording of himself with a team of people ostensibly. 
they watch it together <laughs> and they look at this and they go, yep, put it up there. Show this, this highlights the, you know, arguably they would think that this highlights the best of him. They've scripted this. This wasn't him interposing. I don't, I don't think he, they could have, they could have edited this a million times if they wanted to. This is what they posted to show us what they think is, is the best of the leader of today's Republican party. That's gone full MAGA. Play this clip. He went on a very poorly rated show last night. And he talked about Donald Trump and his wife. I don't know the name of my wife. He was referring to the fact that at CPAC, where I had a sold out speech, the biggest audience they've had in years, I think maybe ever, I made the statement that Melania was very popular because when I mentioned her name, the audience went wild. I then looked at the two people, man and wife, Matt and Mercedes Schlapp, and I said, wow, they really like the first lady. So this got taken is the fact that I thought Mercedes was the first lady. It has nothing to do with that. These people are really dishonest. They are absolutely something. They have a horrible candidate who's a horrible president. They make up things constantly. You take a look at when I use Barack Hussein Obama and I interject him into where it's supposed to be Biden, and I do it purposely for comedic reasons and for sarcasm. So Mitch yeah. McConnell's leaving the United States. <laughs> That's a nice segue there. Mitch Transition. Wait, I, I, wait, I do want to show the guy at the border, though, before we get off the border. I, I, I do want to try this individual. Ben, what, do you have his name? Um, I, 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 I want to make sure that people get to hear his voice. Yeah, it's, because, Jesse Fuente. it's Jesse Fuentes. It's Jesse Fuentes. Fuentes. Because so often, you know, these issues are framed around what Fox is telling people, what the New York Post is saying, mm. what Donald Trump is saying, what Mike Johnson is saying. But we don't hear from the actual people who are living it on a daily basis. And when I hear this individual speak, let, let's, let's listen to him speak for a second. Here, here's a clip from today. Mr. Trump, change your ways. Because what you're doing is you're hurting the people that need the most help. Our community, if you were to study the demographics, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy being on the border. And this unwanted attention, this unwanted militarization of our community is unwelcome. You are not welcome. And there are people's lives at the end of all of these issues. And too often, all the time, Donald Trump just views everything like his little political game and everyone are these political pawns. So when I hear him speak, you know, it's similar to when I hear him, uh, you know, he's talking about Newsom and he's trashing California as some hellhole, right? When you're living in it and you hear Donald Trump speaking about something you are living in and it is so not reflective of reality, you it, like it becomes even more apparent how full of crap the individual is, right? Like if, if, if your expertise is windmills, for example, and you hear Donald Trump speaking about windmills, you immediately know, you know, he's an idiot without it, but you especially know he's an idiot, right? If he's talking about machinery and you operate that specific machinery, you know that he has no idea what the heck he's talking about. And I think those moments kind of really expose him and, and just how, you know, how he approaches things with such a lack of good faith at any point. And it exposes that to those individuals who are affected most by those issues. By the way, I think we have a compilation of Republicans pointing out that Donald Trump is responsible for destroying a bipartisan border deal. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, w when you share the Midas Touch Network with friends and family and colleagues and let them know, I mean, a lot of the voices that we intentionally highlight here is to say, OK, well, just so you know, if, if, you, if you don't take our word for it, wh why don't we hear from Republicans who worked, not the MAGAs, but other Republicans who worked really hard to try to get a border deal passed. And I want to give them credit. I just don't want to attack them because, oh, you're a Republican. No, there are some people who I disagree with a lot. But when it came to coming up with a bipartisan solution on the border and on Ukraine and a national security supplemental, um, we had members who were able to forge compromise, and Donald Trump and the MAGAs in the House of Representatives said, you know what, we're cool with Putin taking over Ukraine. You know what, we want chaos at the border. And that's just not right. That's not right. And then they want to treat us, these MAGAs, because perhaps they're used to the conversations they have at the rallies, that like, we're dumb. 
they're probably used to their their own audience but like we we we, we hello we see it we we know your game plan we know that you're trying to destroy these bills cuz you want chaos and you want to hurt us you want to hurt us you want to cause us pain here play this compilation I think, I think the border is a very important issue for uh, Donald Trump, uh, and the fact that he would communicate to uh, Republican senators and Congress people that he doesn't want us to solve the border problem because he wants to blame uh, Biden for it is uh, is really appalling. I'm, I'm extremely disappointed in the very strange maneuvering by many on the right to, to, to torpedo uh, a potential border reform bill. If we have a bill that, on net, significantly decreases illegal immigration and we sabotage that that is that is inconsistent with what we told our voters we would do but it would be a, a pretty unacceptable dereliction of of your duty i had a popular commentator four weeks ago that i talked to that told me flat out if you try to move a bill that solves the border crisis during this presidential year i will do whatever i can to destroy you but I would acknowledge President Trump failed, along with Republicans, Paul Ryan and, and, and the guys, they failed in 2018 to actually move a border security bill to tighten this so that we weren't dealing with this crisis right now. They failed to actually get the wall built. President Trump signed 12 continuing resolutions after he said he would never sign another one if they didn't give him the money to finish building the wall. Look, th this stuff matters. It adds up. I call balls and strikes. Uh, this is not hard. The speaker says that if one migrant comes across the border, that's one migrant too many, and your bill doesn't do enough to completely shut down the border. Actually, it does completely shut down the border in many ways. Yeah, and ultimately, we want to reach solutions here. I'm appreciative that where the Democrats came in on the bipartisan border deal is to do things like make sure if it's a minor crossing the border, that there could be a lawyer presented or that they could get life-saving care so they're not physically being harmed. Right. And, and We need and to have basic humanity with this stuff. Basic right? and hum I think Democrats need to stand for basic humanity right. and need to stand for you know proper ways for people to become citizens of this country. And immigration is a foundation of the United States of America. And all of these kind of Fox talking points that are put out there and Donald Trump and Fox coordinate, you'd see their, their new thing is, their, and Trump says this, I have a new term now. I have a new term. It's called migrant crime, migrant crime. Then the next day you see on Fox, they're running segments, uh, look at this migrant crime wave. And they show pictures, frankly, of just brown people. And they try to put all crimes on anybody who's not white. It's like the most racist possible thing imaginable. And I just want to make clear here that that is not even reflective of the data. This is all a BS right-wing narrative. I'm not saying there are not issues at the border that need to be solved, but when you look at the actual data, you actually find there is zero indication of any, quote, migrant crime wave. It's all made up, just like all of their issues. It's completely fabricated. And I got to give props to NBC News. They did a story about this. Trump's claims of a migrant crime wave are not supported by national data. An NBC News review of available 2024 crime data shows all crime levels dropping in the cities that have received the most migrants. That flies right in the face of everything these Republicans are saying. Yet that issue is still something where Americans think the opposite. They think the opposite because of the way these things are covered. So mm -hmm. I think we do need to lead with humanity. And I do think we need to lead with the truth. And we shouldn't back away from those values as we speak about yep. issues that are as controversial as immigration. We should be able to stand for that and one thing i want to mention as well i said before you have all these mag you have all these republicans because of maga who are just basically quitting giving up leadership positions and saying they're not going to run again we learned that mitch mcconnell is going to leave as le the minority leader or the leader of the senate republicans um by november um and the house freedom caucus which is maga says our thoughts are with our democrat colleagues in the senate on the retirement of their co-majority leader mitch mcconnell democrat from ukraine no need to wait till november senate republicans should immediately elect elect a republican minority leader so the fact that the magas are calling mitch mcconnell the democrat from ukraine again it just goes to this this isn't conservative it's just right? like 
y'all are not serious people. You're dangerous. You're weird. And and you belong nowhere near the levers of power. And look at how extremist this party has come, yeah. right? Mitch McConnell, Thank the you. most hardline Republican. Like, good riddance, Mitch McConnell. I will say right? you will yeah. not be missed. He tried to act like he was this anti-Trump force. And in many ways, I guess he was kind of towards the end. He was a contrast to Donald Trump. But he is the reason that Donald Trump came to be. He enabled the entire Trump takeover for the party. And he is one of the main reasons for all this chaos uh, that we see in Washington today. That was his entire thing. His entire thing was not to reach compromise with the other side. His thing was, let's try to just get as much power as possible, be as ruthless as possible. We don't care about what's best for the American people. We care what's best for the Republican Party. And to that effect, to that means, he was actually quite effective at that. But we should never forget all the horrific things yes. that Mitch McConnell is doing. And the fact that these people, like think about dedicating your life, right? to doing all those horrific things, right? And even just think like recently, right? Like refusing to seat Obama Supreme Court justice and not impeaching Donald Trump and, and, and taking Donald Trump out of all this when he could have, right? To get repaid now by the new power center of the Republican Party, by being mocked as a Democrat, D-Ukraine, like, like that is your legacy now that you are leaving behind, you know? Like it, it just goes to show you, you could do all these things. You could try, you know, dedicate your entire life to this party. But at the end of the day, if you dedicate your life to the leopards eating faces party, you cannot be surprised when the leopards start eating your face. And Ooh. that is what's happening to Mitch McConnell. When I, we get back, I want to talk about the United States Supreme Court ruling agreeing to hear oral argument on Trump's absolute presidential immunity claim on April 22nd, the ripple effect that has had as well, which Donald Trump and his lawyers unexpectedly saying that they want to go to trial in the Judge Eileen Cannon uh, Mar-a-Lago document case in August. But it's all related to the fact that based on the Supreme Court's ruling in accepting this absolute presidential immunity appeal and to hear oral argument, what Trump and his lawyers are trying to do is to, well, I'll talk about it when we come back after this quick break. Have you heard of Bond Charge? Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. Founded on science and inspired by nature, all Bond Charge products adopt ancestral ways of living in our modern world. Their extensive range of premium wellness products help you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover faster, balance hormones, reduce inflammation. The list is endless. But my favorite product from Bond Charge is their infrared sauna blanket. The infrared sauna blanket works wonders. It has for me, and I know it will for you as well. The sauna blanket works by raising heart rate to that of physical exercise. So it burns calories while you relax. You can burn up to 600 calories in just one session. Sweating helps flush out those heavy metals and other toxins. And the infrared heat elevates your heart rate while relaxing, which releases endorphins and can leave you feeling euphoric after after your session. It works by using infrared light, which heats the body directly rather than the air around you like a traditional sauna. This means you get the same benefits at a lower heat. You also do not need to have your head in the heat like a traditional sauna. It's so easy to set up. It takes less than a minute to set up, in fact, and it heats up rapidly. Enjoy a session for 30 to 40 minutes while relaxing, reading, watching TV, meditating, whatever you'd like. I've tried other products, but they simply don't work near as well as Bond Charge. Bond Charge Infrared Sauna is easy to clean up. It heats up quickly. It's super simple to use. And the lightweight design makes it perfect. Bond Charge ships worldwide in rapid time and has free shipping on every sauna blanket with no hidden costs. And it comes with a 12-month warranty. So here's what you got to do. Go to bondcharge.com slash Midas and use the coupon code Midas, M-E-I-D-A-S, to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash Midas and use the coupon code Midas to save 15%. I just got to say, I just got to say this real quick with Bond Charge. I, I'm going to say I, I've been using it a whole bunch. The, the infrared sauna blanket. I think I look dang good as recommended. I've been using it and just one of my like highlights of 
of my weeks when I get in there. So definitely check that out. Links in the description. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too prideful to give myself a compliment there, Ben. I see you smirking at me, but I, I got, I credit <laughs> no, it. To Jordy, it's, it's, it's like having a spa day in your house. It's Honestly, like, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, Could it's, not recommend it enough. Use the great. code. Ben's going to mock me. But before you do, I actually have something smart. I think, I, I think you'd agree with, did you guys notice too, right before we mo fully move off this McConnell uh, segment here, he only ramped up his anti-Trump rhetoric as as Trump started to go harder and harder at his wife. Like he's no symbol for the anti-Trump movement from the Republican Party. I think there's a direct line that you could sort no, of he's draw. No, at Mitch, it. Mitch McConnell, no hero, good. And range. how See dare never. the MAGA Republicans try and make it seem like this guy's my friend? Like, yo, Mitch, you're still not invited to my party. So get out of here. I, no, thank I, you. I, I may I may have missed the memo where he ramped up being anti-Trump at any point, but um, I now I'll give you now I'll give you the little big brother smirk right there. Um, <laughs> Brett, let's tell us about the economy, but then I want to talk thereafter about the Supreme Court's ruling. Um, I want to talk about why people are I know people are wondering why would Donald Trump go before Judge Eileen Cannon and request an August trial date in 2024, not 2025, not 2026. What's the strategy there? Has to do a lot with what the Supreme Court. I did really, on I really need your analysis on this. Can't wait but for it. before we I get to my it, analysis. Yeah. For, first, I really want to get to our NetSuite Know Your Numbers Minute, give you some economic updates here. This is the NetSuite by Oracle Know Your Numbers Minute. NetSuite. Big economic news up again. What'd you say? It's a net suite. Now you like my oh, intro, guys? I, just, I, I love this segment. I, I, I like you love this segment as much as we do. Comment, like, leave some, no. like, let them. Know. I love this. Let's go. For Let's sure. Well, it. I'm gonna let the people know what's going on because what, what I what I love too is like we, there's so much good news to speak about right now when it comes to the economy that does not get enough attention in the mainstream media. To be honest, Ben, mm -hmm. like this for example, did anybody hear that the Fed official said that the inflation fight is still on track? Inflation may have been a little stubborn in January, but the Fed is saying that's just a little blip. But when you look at these long-term trends, you see inflation trending down quite dramatically. They're making sure that people know that this fight against inflation has not stalled whatsoever. And they reiterated their previous expectations of a summertime cut in interest rates. The Fed, the Fed officials are also starting to see progress on core PCE inflation for services, which are more closely tied to these labor costs. And these are important kind of trends to analyze. With you know, that's what you know, it gives you easy access to all the economic data and trends through their integrated analytics. So you could always be on top of the latest. It gives you a competitive advantage over the businesses. You know, that's that's important. And speaking of businesses, I'm sure a lot of you out there have small businesses. And I'd love to get your thoughts on this too. Let's do as we're live right now let's do an anecdotal poll how about this you tell us love in the that. comments we'll be looking at the comments right over here poll. but <laughs> small but 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 this is the hard data we have to we get the anecdotes from our people but this is the hard data small business owners are now reporting feeling significantly better about the u.s economy as we see inflation cooling and we cool. see these recession fears subside every headline in 2023 at the beginning was a hundred percent chance of recession 100 percent, right like what a bold proclamation 100 percent like giving least, yourself no out like yeah, give, zero give, out there give yourself like a little little leeway okay but in fact on the contrary economic optimism right now among smaller employers is at a 22 year high says pnc financial services group when they pulled small when they pulled small and mid-size business owners in fact a majority of respondents 55% said they are, quote, highly optimistic about the national economy this year. If you want to know how that differs from a year ago, it's up 34% from last fall and up 26% wow. for a year ago. So as we've been saying, people are starting to actually feel the tangible effects on the, of the, from the economy in their wallets and their businesses. That's good. Over the next six months, just over half of the business owners are surveyed said they believe their profits will rise with only 5% of survey respondents saying that they expect their earnings to fall. That's a pretty good ratio. If you ask me, and you know, if you have small businesses out there as, as your business grows, the good thing about NetSuite is they have these scalable solutions that grow with the business. And speaking of growth, I, I just want to end on this one quote from PNC chief economist, Gus Foucher, quote, the U.S. economy is doing quite well. We had strong economic growth in the second half of 2023 with consumers spending more and businesses investing. That strength is persisting into 2024. So 
Good times ahead, folks. We'd love to hear your thoughts there. That was the NetSuite by Oracle Know Your Numbers Minute. Do you know your own numbers for your business? Download NetSuite's ultimate KPI checklist right now at netsuite.com slash Midas. Great let's segment go. right there. Great segment. If you I love that segment. segment. I love If you love that segment as much as we love that segment, let us know. Let NetSuite know because we love that segment. We want to keep doing that segment. And Ben, I, I want to have like hear. a legal segment like that. This legal segment is brought to you by <laughs> Brett gets the Brett gets the great I segment. Get the, I, I get the segments. But speaking of, I, I want this legal segment to be brought to you by by our one and only Ben. I, I was I was personally, you know, I made the joke earlier, like, you know, Trump is probably going to set a date like in the distant future. Right. But the reality is he asked for a date that was far earlier than anybody anticipated. But there's obviously some sort of kind of strategy going into Donald Trump's decision here. I want to hear your thoughts about that. I don't know if you want to talk about SCOTUS first. Supreme yeah, Court. First but, off, but Donald I got to hear this. Donald Trump knows how to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Like, the Supreme Court kind of gave him a gift. They like, I bet you the Supreme Court justices too are like, what an idiot. What are you doing? And I get what Donald Trump is thinking here, but I think it has a high degree of probability of actually backfiring in his face. So let's just talk about what the Supreme Court did. First, the Supreme Court says that they're going to hear oral argument on this ridiculous and frivolous issue. They don't say it that way. But on Donald Trump's claim that he can order SEAL Team 6 to kill his political opponents, and that's Same. on the outer perimeter of his conduct, or as Donald Trump says in some of his other speeches, he's like a rogue cop that kills innocent people or a pedo priest that molests children. Like That's how Donald Trump describes himself in words very similar to that in the speeches that he – bad priests, rogue cops, um, and he says that he should be entitled to um, – uh, you know, whatever. So the Supreme Court said that after waiting for three weeks, the Supreme Court said that they're going to hold oral argument on April 22nd of 2024. So what does that basically mean? That means that, um, you know, if you look at when the stay first issued after the federal judge, Tanya Chutkin, denied the um, uh, Donald Trump's motion to dismiss the indictment on absolute immunity grounds, right? That's December, right? So you go December to January, January to February, February to March, March to April. Um, and so where, where are you at there? Like five, like a five month, six month kind of time period right there. So then if you look at April um, and you believe there's going to be, you know, oral argument will take place the week of April 22nd. Like we still haven't heard the Supreme Court's ruling yet on the 14th Amendment Section 3 case, right? As, they as, they as, sure as, took that up quickly though, Ben. They, were, well, they took it up. They took it up quicker than this. Um, but, but nonetheless, we still haven't heard their order yet there. So you figure though, you know, add another 30... Add another 30 days, right? And 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 so say we get an order by the Supreme Court on June 1st, right? Maybe. By the time a mandate issues, maybe you're in July, right? So you got July, August, September, October, November, December. It, I mean, to me, if you just do the math, it really puts that, uh, you know, the earliest the Washington, D.C. case can be heard is November and December. And it's not going to be heard, you know, in the month of November. It's not going to be heard, you know, in my view, in, in October. So to me, the Supreme Court, by setting, by delaying it, and by the way, it takes four justices to grant certiorari, which means to grant the hearing of the oral argument. They're not granting Donald Trump's request of absolute presidential immunity. They're granting the ability to hear the oral argument on it. But by them doing that, you know, it keeps the stay in place in Washington, D.C., and I think it delays it until you know, pretty much, you know, October or November, and it's not going to take place then. But the fact that they're taking the absolute presidential immunity appeal, I think emboldened Donald Trump in the Judge Eileen Cannon case, the Mar-a-Lago document case for Trump's willful retention of national defense information at Mar-a-Lago. He's uh, being, uh, he, he's on he's on trial there with, or he's in a criminal case there with co-defendants, Walty Nauta and Carlos de Oliveira, and they've also, also been charged with obstruction of justice. One of the arguments Donald Trump's making there is absolute presidential immunity there as well. That And he's making an argument under the Presidential Records Act that he has the 
that that these you know you know nuclear documents and war plans are actually his personal records that that they belong to him that he intended to take them and that there's nothing you can do about it because of the absolute presidential immunity and they're converted into his own personal property in addition ostensibly to being declassified telepathically and so i think he thinks in his own mind whatever the date is it's a made up date anyway because I'm going to go to the United States Supreme Court. They're already taking the other absolute presidential immunity argument. I'll I'll get an interlocutory appeal with the 11th Circuit that's going to stay regardless. That will stay all of the proceedings here before Judge Eileen Cannon on an interlocutory appeal basis. Um, the way the Washington, D.C. case was stayed when it went to the D.C. Circuit. We had to wait for that ruling in February, and it, and it still stayed to this point. So I think Trump is picking August, believing that he can block out the other cases, Fulton County case, which uh, Fonnie Willis is requesting, the Fulton County District Attorney is requesting that case go in August. And in the event the Supreme Court rules very quickly and rejects his absolute presidential immunity claim, he can box out and have another case with a uh, favorable yeah. judge in that August time period. So that's where I think, you know, his his strategy is. Um, but but ultimately, where I think it's going to backfire is he's now forfeited the argument, though, that these cases shouldn't take place around that time period. Right. His whole argument, as I understood it. Was it's a you know and it's a bogus argument that this is election interference, right? And that these trials shouldn't take place before the November election. He's asking that it take place right <laughs> in the heart of election. He's it's asking such... that it take. He's asking that it take place right in the heart of election season. So it undercuts every like. So number one, that's why I'm like he's an idiot. Like I get the, <laughs> I get that like okay he's maybe thinking like this is a chess move or a checkers move. It's like or a chess move that I think is like a stupid checkers move. Because his whole thing was that it's election interference. That was his whole argument. So now you want to set the trial right in August so it takes place. What if it were to go? September, October, November. It takes place right in the heart of the election. So so you want it to take place there? So to me, it undercuts any ability to make that argument to any, any court. And what if the 11th Circuit, unlike the um, D.C. Circuit, actually finds that they don't have jurisdiction to hear this case under, you know, the the that doctrine that interlocutory appeals should not be made when it comes to the issue of absolute presidential immunity. What if the 11th Circuit takes a different view and goes, no, we're not even going to hear this. This case should go to trial. Hmm. I mean, right? I mean, it has a chance of backfiring. And then this case actually goes before Judge Eileen Cannon. Like, that's not without risk. And I would put that risk. I mean, although I'd want to see you go to trial, I'd put that at around 30 to 40 percent of, of happening. So what happens if ultimately and then what if the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals say, no, we're not hearing this. And then Donald Trump tries to file search, uh, you know, a, a petition for certiorari before the Supreme Court. But the Supreme Court goes, wait a minute, this whole case is about things that happened after you left office. So we're not going to hear this one. You know, at least the at least the D.C. case, you can argue you were still in office at this time. What if they right. draw that distinction and they don't and they don't give him the save? And what if they're pissed now because, the, you know, the right wingers on the Supreme Court thought, hey, we were trying to help you out in the D.C. <laughs> case. And now you made this stupid move. And why would you force our hand on this? We were going to kick all of the federal cases until 2025. So for all of those reasons. One, that's why I think Trump's strategy was that. But to me, it undercuts his central thesis of a, on this is election interference when he's asking that it takes place in the heart of the election. And I think it could backfire. So, you know, look, obviously the the, the, the order happened, you know, a few hours ago. So that's my initial impression. I want to I want to think through it more thoroughly. But 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 that's where we're at right now. That's so it's so fascinating. And, you know, you know, you know, there's never just a, a surface level anything going on when Donald Trump makes a legal filing. There's always some other ulterior motive at play. And especially when, you know, the trial judge, like in this case, is a 
favorable judge to Trump like Judge Eileen Cannon. And that's a a friendly way of me putting it. But I think that makes perfect sense to, you know, show how Donald Trump is is truly playing games with the trial schedule. I do hope it backfires. And, uh, you know, I, I guess we'll see, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, with all these trials, I think it's great that this trial is certain in a few weeks in New York. And yes, that is a criminal trial in New York. But, you know, by this point, I think we all have to realize, right, that ultimately the people who are going to be saving democracy are going to be us, right? Like you, you can never rely on anything, right? You can never rely on these external forces. You can never rely on a judge, a prosecutor, everything going your way all the time. But the one thing you can control is your ability to go out there and vote and to make sure mm -hmm. and organize and make sure that other people go out there and vote. And the surest way to make sure that Donald Trump, quite frankly, goes to prison and is not allowed to infect the politics of our country and the culture of our country anymore is by defeating him in this election and ensuring that he does go to trial, not only in these cases, but in all the cases. Brett, can I read just this deposition uh, oh, transcript from Hunter Biden oh, from that Hunter, we released yeah. earlier today. Uh, some some uh, context. Hunter was in, uh, they, they, as we said earlier in the episode, Hunter Biden was brought in. He, he, he went, you know, they asked him to go to this closed door hearing and Hunter okay. Biden said, you know, okay, after, you know, there was a lot of controversy around that weeks and weeks ago, but Hunter Biden uh, sat there and, and Ben, how, how did the deposition go? What are we seeing in these transcripts? Wow. I mean, it looks like Hunter one did great. Um, and two, these Mac, like you can't help but feel like sympathetic for him. And he's standing up to these MAGA Republicans who are asking him all these, you know, ridiculous questions. And when they're confronting him, like he, he's standing up for himself. And like, give me an example. This is Harriet Hagman, MAGA Republican who replaced Liz <laughs> Cheney. Imagine being questioned by her. <laughs> and she goes, yeah. And she goes, and when would that be? He goes, again, I feel like I have to explain what addiction is because they want him to like, say things about like when he was addicted. And then she goes, you don't have to explain addiction. I'm asking for dates, Hunter. Okay, I don't have, because if you understood addiction, you don't have necessarily dates. The one date you remember is this. You remember the day you quit and you remember the day that you first started when you were 11 years old and you had your first drink. You don't remember all the times in between in which you weren't an addict, in which you got sober, in which you tried to get sober, in which you had long stretches of sobriety during that period of time. And I mean, everybody knows this. Everyone has someone that they love that's gone through this. It's Mr. Biden. I'm, I'm answering your question. Then Matt Gates tried to question him. And Gates says, he's reading something and goes, okay, my apology. Quote, skeletons of his family may make it hard for him to put us through the ringer in pursuit of the office. It's just pure bullshit. It continues regardless. He's still using that line by proxy. He doesn't say it himself that directly, but all of his advisors do. Do you recall sending this? And Hunter goes, no, I don't recall sending this, but I can tell you, Mr. Gates, number one is this. This is me on supposed to be to my daughter, February 22nd, 2019. And I'm literally on a daily basis trying to kill myself. It had nothing to do with business. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's me complaining in every different way, shouting out the world and literally in complete and utter agony. And my beautiful daughter is literally trying to save my life and reach out to me. And I go on a tangent and a tirade and I act like a child. And I say things that I would never, ever, ever want to be read because they don't resemble anything resembling the truth about the way I think about my dad, who literally was also at this time trying to save my life. And so I don't know what you're trying to get out here. And Gates responds, were you on drugs when you were on the Burisma board? And then the witness and then, and then Hunter responds, Mr. Gates, look me in the eye. You really think that's appropriate to ask me? Gates, absolutely. Hunter, of all of the people sitting around this table, do you think that it's appropriate to ask me? Gates, yeah. Are you going to answer? And of course, I'll be doing a whole hot take on this Powerful. as well. But 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 very powerful stuff right there. I want to thank all the Midas Mighty for watching this episode. Um, we are grateful for you as always. We're going to be doing an after show at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. We don't have outside investors here on the Midas Touch podcasts. And so we're thankful to our pro-democracy sponsors. We're thankful for all of you for getting out the word. And one of the ways we build this independent media platform where We've been on the YouTube charts, number one, beating Fox and Forbes and MSNBC and CNN. 
and they're funded with billions of dollars. We've got emojis. We've got some pro-democracy sponsors, and we got our Patreon, patreon.com slash Midas Touch. That's all. Even if you can't do that, really no worries at all. Just spread the word about this network. Let people know that facts matter, and this is where we show the facts and show the truth. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We're so, so grateful for you. Jordy, take it away. One more thing to add to that list, Ben. And we got the Midas Mighty. Shout out to the Midas Mighty! The Midas Mighty! At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy, and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.